My name is Brooke Ostrom. I'm the business and media mentor for 1678. I've been the mentor there for about nine years now. Um, and before that, and before I retired, I spent about 35 years or so in marketing, communications, and public relations for architecture and engineering firms, and some work in the nonprofit area. So working with 1678, um, you know, we have done a lot of work on our branding, and so I just want to talk about that a little bit this evening. So the first thing is just to talk about what is a brand. And I thought this was a pretty good quote about, and, and brands usually obviously have to do, we're mainly talking about like commercial products most of the time. But you as teams also have a brand, um, you know, in terms of how you represent your team and, and how, you know, how you have your visual image out there in the world. Um, you know, brands obviously, does anybody know where brands originally came from? The idea that when we talk about branding something, we talk about branding a firm or a company or a business or a team. Where does it come from? It comes, it comes from like branding cattle. So when people had cattle, everybody had a brand, right? You had a brand that was a unique sign, like a rocking R or whatever it was, you know, your, your initial or something that you put on your cattle so that you could tell your cattle from somebody else's cattle. Well, then that kind of eventually became the idea of branding, of giving, you know, a, a unique, um, you know, a, a unique uh, look to something that's yours that distinguishes it from something else. So this was a quote I found I thought was pretty good. It says, a brand is a product, service, or concept that is publicly distinguished from other products, services, or concepts so that it can be easily communicated and usually marketed. Branding is the process of creating and disseminating the brand name, its qualities, and personality. And I think the idea of personality is something that's really key here. Branding can be applied to the entire corporate identity as well as to individual products and services or concepts. So this kind of covers the whole idea of what a brand is. It's the whole idea of who you are, how you present yourself, and your personality. So it's not just your logo. A lot of times when we talk about brand, you think like, well, it's, it's this, it's the logo. Well, it's a whole lot more than that. It's everything that supports that logo. It's everything that goes along with it. So that's going to be not only the fonts you use for your logo, but it's probably the fonts that go with it. If you're using documents or something like that, or your, your, you know, your website, or anything that you're using your logo with, so the fonts that support that, the colors that support it, you know, probably a range of colors that, you, that go with your logo, um, the style, how you use your logo, where it's placed, how it's placed. Um, like for ours, we have, you know, it's almost always in this orientation. We have one optional orientation that's at a very particular angle, but those are the only ones that are allowed. So, you know, where is it going to be? How is it going to be used? And when you're talking about brand, it also includes a lot more than just this. You know, it, it could be how you dress for competition. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen uh, 118. Um, they always ha are wearing khakis. Everybody on the team wears khakis along with their, their T-shirts. Um, if you, I think it's uh, Paradox down the Bay Area in Fremont, they all wear red pants. Um, some teams wear pretty elaborate costumes. Some teams wear hats. You know, some teams wear astronaut suits. I mean, there's all sorts of things out there that people do, but that's all part of their brand. That's part of what they're communicating about their personality as a team. You know, and for like for 1678, when we go to competition, everybody has to be wearing the lime. That's just, that's in our handbook, is that you're supposed to be wearing a lime. You're supposed to be wearing, except for off-season competitions and practice days, you're supposed to be wearing the current year's um, T-shirt. So we, you know, everybody shows up, everybody's wearing this. Everybody is repping our brand. Um, and I've got to say that the one thing as a mentor that I really like about that is that I can look across the stadium and say, oh, there's one of our people, there's one of our students, um, because you can see this from all over the place. And it makes us very identifiable competition. And identifiable is one of the things. So you want a, a brand um, that is something that people identify easily. And you want it to be consistent. So, and we'll talk a little bit about the, more about that later. But, you know, if you're representing your brand in a lot of different ways and a lot of different places, and somebody doesn't know if that's really you or maybe that's somebody else's, you know, you're using different colors, different forms, whatever, you need to be consistent. That's how you really build brand recognition. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so actually what we're doing is we're, um, we're 
videoing all the presentations. And then all the videos will be up on our fall workshop page on, the, on 1678's website. And then along with all those, we'll also have um, the slide deck as a PDF. So you can, you can pull it up. Because they don't generally aren't going to show up real well on here. Usually is what happens. So these are some corporate brands. Like I said, you know, when we talk about branding, a lot of times we're mainly talking about corporations, big places. So does anybody recognize any of these? Do these, these look like ones you've seen before? Yeah. So In-N-Out Burger, they pretty much use the same logo for years and years and years. And they probably will never change it. They have different ways they use it, but that's pretty much the logo you see at every In-N-Out, everything they put it on, T-shirts, stickers, whatever. That's the way it looks. Uh, Minecraft. Um, you know, it's their name. It's obviously built with all the blocks, so you see it. You see the creeper down there, so you get the whole look of what Minecraft is all about. YouTube. Um, it's really interesting. That logo has actually evolved a lot over time. I don't know if you, none of you probably remember what it originally looked like. It was the word U, and then it was a sort of what was a cathode ray tube or the TV tube when it was not a flat screen TV. And it had the word tube in it, and they realized they went along that that really didn't mean anything to anybody anymore. So they started, there were some subtle changes over the years until they have the, you know, basically the play button, and then the YouTube has moved out here. I guess at one point they talked about getting rid of tube because they figured nobody knew what it was anymore, but they were just too invested in it. Does so anybody know what the one uh, down here on the left is? What's this one? Great. So you, can, you see Instagram. You know what it is. They don't have their name on it. It's just the, the logo. And you've seen the logo so many times. Does anybody know what that is? No, no, sorry. What, what is this? What is this representing? Yep. Originally their logo was basically a Polaroid camera. And then it evolved into this, which is... The, just the shape, the outline of the camera itself. Yeah, and then the other one over there is Pepsi. Um, and I included Pepsi partially because <clears throat> that was when I was working, I was working on a project um, with a graphic designer to do an installation um, at the King's Arena that included the Pepsi logo. And that was when I first got introduced to the idea of what branding standards really are. Um, Pepsi is very, very protective of that logo. Um, they have a book, and I am not kidding you, that is about that thick that tells you everything you can and cannot do with that logo. Yes? <laughs> yeah, and, and they are, I, you know, they're still very protective of that. And, you know, you cannot rotate this, make it into a, you know, three-dimensional ball, change the color. Um, you know, they, it's everything about how that's going to look when it's bigger, how it's going to look when it's smaller, um, you know, what you can and can't do with it. And it's, it's very, very particular. Um, and so that was when I first got introduced the idea of how extensive your branding standards can be in terms of protecting you know, your, your brand identity. Okay, some team brands. Obviously, this one's 1678. Um, 3128, aluminum narwhals. I love their logo. Um, it is so cute, I can't stand it. Uh, 254, one that everybody's probably seen. I'm sure the color is pretty, you know, they're very consistent with that color. Whenever you see that color, you pretty much know it's 254. <clears throat> Anybody know who this team is? Buchanan Bird Brains. Um, they have done a lot with this. Um, they use this logo both with and without their, their number. Um, they've done a lot with that. You can, get, you can get plushies of those three. And, and what is, does anybody know what these are taken from? What does this look like? It's Angry Birds and what else? That's the first logo, right? It's some parts of the first logo, and then they've kind of made these Angry Birds. What they did was they um, used this for a children's book, and they used that children's book to teach STEM concepts to younger kids, and then they continue to use this whole approach as part of a lot of their outreach programs and their education programs. So they've been able to take that brand and extend that into a lot of the outreach programs they're doing. They use that in a lot of different ways for their outreach. So you know who the center one is? Bread. Um, Originally, they had a very complex logo. They had like these two dragons in a circle, and there was like a loaf of bread in the middle. And then recently, they changed over this, which is obviously a much simpler brand. And 
probably a lot easier to use. Um, the other one was very complicated, and we'll talk a little bit about that, but this is, you know, they rebranded to this, which is fun, it's identifiable, it's scalable, um, it's something that's easy to use. Anybody know who the one on the end is? California team. Huh? Holy cows. Holy cows. Um, again, really recognizable logo. Doesn't even need their, their team number on it. They have ones that have the team number without the team number. And we'll talk a little bit about their branding standards later. But um, so your, your brand doesn't have to be your team number, your team name. Um, it can be something that represents what you want to have represent your team. What's something it says to people about your team. Um, so if you're going to develop a brand for your team, first idea is you need to decide what works for your team, right? You know, what, what is going to work? What's the image that you want? And then try those ideas out on people who are going to be seeing that a lot, the students on your team, your parents, your mentors, um, you know, maybe some community members or whatever. If you're thinking about, you know, developing a new brand or you're going to, you know, maybe rebrand what you have. And the main part about all of it is what do you want it to communicate? Do you want to show that you're really competitive? You know, you're going to have like a, a jaguar with its, you know, claws out or something, or do you want to be serious? Do you want to be fun, like breads or aluminum narwhals? Do you want to show that you're approachable? Um, you know, maybe you want it to be based on your school. So maybe it's going to be really tied to whatever your school mascot is or something like that. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's something completely different. Ours has nothing to do with our school. Our colors have nothing to do with our school. Our name has nothing to do with our school. Um, so, you know, you want to think about all those things. What's, what is it you want to tell people about your team when you, when you put your brand out there? What is it? You know, you, you could, like I said, could be you want to be seen as really imposing and, and competitive and, you know, that's great if that's what your team wants to be. But, but it's just kind of understanding what it is, the message you're, you're sending, that personality is going to be part of your brand. So what design choices support your brand? So all these things. The color you use, the colors that support that color, the font you use for your, your logo, and then, again, the supporting fonts. And like I said before, the complexity of your logo. Um, really complex logos can be hard to use. They maybe look really good at, like, one size, but, you know, maybe they look good a little better, bigger. But you're always going to need to think about scalability. You always need to think about it's going to be, sometimes it's going to be really small. It's going to be small on your Instagram page. It's going to be small on your website maybe. Um, you know, you're going to have uses where it gets bigger and smaller all the time. So, you know, you may need, when you look at it, you may need to think about how is that going to look when it's small. You know, people tend to get fixated on it just being one size. And you're going to use it in a lot of different ways in a lot of different places. So, um, like for us, we have an alternate that does not have the, the words in here. Um, because obviously when this gets smaller, they just disappear. Um, so we do have alternates for that. We have an alternate that's, that's used on some social media stuff um, that's very small and actually sort of, it's at an angle and cuts it off <coughs> so it can fit into, you know, a very a pretty small space that you're provided. Um, we just had, we had really lucky to have a new building built for us by the school district and in the architect's rendering it showed that there was going to be like a big 1678 logo on the wall, which I never thought would show up. And then walked in there one day, and here's this 20-foot tall lime in there. And it looks great at that size. You know, we're lucky. It looks great, really big, and, you know, we've, we've looked at ways to make sure that it looks good when it's really small. So that's something you need to think about. You're going to have a lot of different ways your logo gets used. So once you have a brand, or maybe you have a brand existing already, um, you need to have some branding standards, as we talked right up front. You know, branding standards are really important. So they're, they're written guidelines, not just kind of guidelines you all agree to in concept, but really written guidelines that are for all the uses of your brand. So how much room is around it? You know, how, what's the proportion of it? How do you use it? You know, are there different colors? Um, you know, so some of the things that you need to think about, what are the primary and secondary fonts? Um, we had an experience lately, where, recently, where we do a... Um, Usually for off-season competitions, we'll build a clone robot from one or two other teams. And so we're working on one right now from Nautilus in Mexico, um, 4010. So we were doing, a, we're doing a clone of their robot. And when we do that, we'll do a collaboration t-shirt that we'll provide to the teams. And, and we do for fun. And our drive team will wear them and everything. 
Um, and when we were doing it, we realized that their name, Nautilus, was not a font. It was something that they developed themselves, right? So they, they made this font that said Nautilus and the numbers, and they had created it out of different shapes. I mean, it was super cool. <clears throat> but we're looking at and going, what is that? You know, what was it modified from? Well, we con contact and they said, oh, well, we just built it, you know, which is awesome. But if you're going to do that, say you do have a font or a way that you've written your name or whatever that's not a standard font, you need to think about, well, what's going to go with it? What are you going to use that supports that when you have it in a document? You have it on your website. You have it on a flyer. Well, you know, what are the, the fonts that are going to work with what the image you have on there are? So fonts are both primary and secondary. So it's like headline fonts, body text fonts. Those are all the things you want to think about that are going to go with whatever your image is. You need to know what your color palette's going to be, and you need to think about it in all the different ways that you're going to use color. Um, I, you know, whether it's an RGB, CMYK, whether it's a PMS color, um, or hexadecimal, which is just kind of another way of doing RGB. Um, does everybody know the difference between RGB, CMYK, and PMS? You do? Anybody else know? Okay, so RGB is basically what you're going to see on your computer. That's your, that's your computer screen for the most part. CMYK is when things are printed. That's um, cyan, magenta, yellow, and K is black. So that's when you have four color process that's doing your, your printing. PMS is Pantone Matching System. Um, it's a, <laughs> kind of an old way of doing colors, but it's often what's used for like printing t-shirts and things like that. So a lot of times your, your printer will ask you for a, a Pantone color of some sort. Um, and usually you can, there's direct um, correlations between CMYK, RGB, and then your, your PMS colors. Um, so color palette. So not only your primary color, but where are the colors that go with it? So what's secondary color? What are the other, you know, the other colors are going to work with your, your logo um, and your communications. You need to think about whether it's going to be on light or dark backgrounds. So, you know, maybe your logo looks really good on a white background. Maybe it doesn't look good on a, on a black background. So do you have an alternate? Do you have another way of doing your logo that's going to look better on a black ba background? So maybe you've got some alternatives for your logo. Um, sizing, um, again, if it's really small, maybe you have a different logo that you're using or a simplified version of your logo. Um, you know, there's, you need to think about, you know, how is it, at what point do I need to look at something different, you know, or making that logo look a little different or a little simpler. What are acceptable and unacceptable variations? Um, sometimes, you know, we, I mean, we do this more lately. You know, we'll do different variations on the line. So we had our pride lime um, as part of our uh, Citrus for Change. We did several limes that were for uh, mental health awareness, um, stopping AAPI hate, uh, Black Lives Matter. And so those were all sort of variations and coloring and everything on our line. Um, and, you know, but maybe there's things that we wouldn't do. You know, we wouldn't put it upside down. We wouldn't put it straight up and down. We wouldn't, um, you know, change the shape of it significantly. And those are the kind of things that you need to think about is, you know, what's okay to do with your lime or your, well, your logo, your, your image, and what isn't? You know, maybe there's colors you don't want it to be. Maybe you don't want it to be in three dimensions or whatever. But, you know, think about what are the limits of what you want to do that still preserves the image you want to have. Because there are things that you might do that, you know, just don't feel right for what the, what the, with the personality of your brand. Um, and then rules for modifying the brand for special cases. Like, like I said, when we modify ours, we do it, you know, it's, we bring it to our leadership group, we talk about it, we get consensus that everybody's okay with us making whatever modification is to our standard line. So you should have those rules in there, you know, not just that somebody on your business media team or whatever just makes the decision to change your logo and do something different. Everybody should be able to buy into it. So these are some of the ones I talked about that really good branding standards. And I would really, really um, suggest you go and look at these websites. All of them have a really good document and other, other things on how they do their branding. Uh, Team 1528, holy cows, we saw their logo up front. Uh, they have a very comprehensive uh, document on branding standards. I really highly recommend it. Um, they kind of, I mean, literally wrote the book on writing the book on branding standards for FRC. Um, they have a, a publication that goes into a lot of graphic design um, concepts and theory, um, as well as, um, you know, what, uh, you know, how their logo works, how it's applied, how they do it in layouts for documents. 
um, you know, just how it's used, how it's not used. It's, it's really good. It's very comprehensive. I really recommend it. Um, aluminum narwhals, uh, they have a really nice um, one also. And I'm going to show you a little bit more from theirs. Um, but they go into a lot of how they use their colors. They have a great color palette that they use for their, their, um, their brand. A really good document and, you know, again, really um, encourage you to take a look at it. Exploding Bacon, um, Team 1902. I don't particularly care for their brand, but that doesn't really matter. They're very good at it. They're very good at imagery. They're very good at branding. And um, go to their website. They have some presentations that they've done in the past at, like, um, at the World Champs, and they've been recognized a lot of times for their imagery. <clears throat> They're another team that has taken that imagery, and it's very fun. It's very cartoony, and they've taken it out and used it in a lot of their outreach programs. <clears throat> so they're able to take that, that image and then they're, they're using that to promote a lot of different things. So all three of these teams I would just highly recommend. Take a look at their, their branding documents and give you some really good ideas. Um, you know, there's other teams out there too, but I think these are, you know, really three of the most um, comprehensive and give you the best ideas for it. So I want to talk a little bit about brand evolution. Um, we're coming up on our 20th season, so we're kind of been talking a lot about history of the team and where we came from and everything. And everybody always talks about, asks us, where did the lime come from? You know, where did you get Citrus Circuits come from? Honestly, nobody really knows. I mean, it's sort of lost in history at this point. Originally, when we started out in 2004, it was Engine Robotics. And that was the, the logo, those two gears, um, Engine, the number. It was pretty cool. I mean, somebody did a really nice job on the logo. They had that for a few years. Um, then it went to Engine Robotics, and somebody put this lemon here. No idea why. Nobody knows why. They just put a lemon on the, on the Engine Robotics. Somehow, everybody liked the lemon better than they liked the rest of the logo. So what we ended up with was this, this sort of half-cut citrus with citrus circuits, or itrus urquits, as it actually looks like. Um, and this had some like drops below it and the number down here and everything. And it was, it was kind of cool. Um, then this was sort of the, it went from here to this, which was sort of the generation obviously just before that. So this was the idea of having, you know, the circuits on a citrus. Somehow we sort originally we sort of had, it was sort of all citrus. So there was like one year the shirt was orange, one year the shirt was yellow. Um, and one shirt, one year the shirt was lime green. Well, somewhere along the line, they sort of settled in on the lime as the shape. Um, I think because the lime was a little different shape. It wasn't just a circle. You know, it had a little bit of interest to it. And then we had a um, business and media lead um, who developed what's pretty much our current logo. Um, simplified a lot of this, obviously, so not all these little tiny hairy circuits on here to be the larger circuits. Um, that was further refined a little bit with some of the typography, um, but that's the logo we've had for, I'd say, at least the last um, eight years or so. So, um, so, you know, it came a long way. So it's not like your logo has to be static. It's not like your image has to be static. You know, you can, you can change it. You just need to be very, you know, thoughtful about where you're going with it and what you're doing. Although, like I said, nobody really knows where that line came from. Aluminum and Arwals. I love this. So this is how they do variations on their logo. Um, they, these are ones for various, um, for various games that they've done over the year. I think this one with Stronghold. I'm not really sure what the other ones were for, but um, they're great. I mean, and, and it's, the important thing is what, you know, they, they themed each one of these, you know, with the, the type, typography they used. Um, and then sort of, you know, dressing up the narwhal a little bit and everything. But the important thing is, through all that, you still recognize the brand, right? You still see it. It's still the narwhal. They never changed the narwhal. They sort of put a hat on it, put an eye patch on it, you know, made the, the text go along with whatever the game or the event that they were doing was. But they kept the integrity of the narwhal the whole time. So, you know, no matter what, you saw that and you go, hey, it's still aluminum narwhals. So, um, this is just a really good example of how to do this. You know, that you can have a brand 
and you can be, you can have fun with it. Um, Funky Monkeys is the same way. Have you guys ever seen Funky Monkeys out of San Jose? Same thing. That monkey's always there. They do lots of different things with it, um, but you know, it's always very recognizable as their brand and, and um, what they do with it. Anyway, I just thought this was outstanding. So. Um, you can also have some supporting brands. Um, these are brands that we've developed for other programs that we have um, under Citrus Circuits. Our RoboCamps, which is our summer camp program. Um, DYR, which is our Davis Youth Robotics. WISE, which is our Women in STEM Empowerment. Um, the, we wanted each one of those things to have its own identity. So it wasn't all just sort of Citrus Circuits. But all these work really well with our logo and our colors. Um, RoboCamps and DYR are kind of part of the same uh, family of, of outreach um, events that we do. So, you know, these obviously we kept the color scheme the same on both of them. So you can see if there's a relationship between DYR and RoboCamps. WISE is an outreach program that we do um, for younger girls in ages four through, or grades four through eight um, with sort of hands-on STEM activities and everything. And again, we wanted to have something that was its own identity and that would you know, hopefully appeal to younger girls to have them come and about once a month we have an, have an activity event where they can come in and learn more about STEM. So you can have other brands that go along with your overall brand and you know, we use these to support these individual programs. So I thought I'd ask you guys a little bit because rather than just me up here talking waving my arms for 40 minutes, um, I want to ask you guys a little bit about you know, some of these things. What do you like about your team brand? Do you have guidelines? What would you change? Were there other teams that you like? So somebody want to go? I'd love to hear from you guys about what you, you do with your own brands. Anybody? Yes. Okay, which, I'm sorry, which team was it again? Oh, Eco Road, and you guys are up in Runner Park. Yeah, uh, no. 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 Sorry, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, no, well, you're in Runner Park, yes. So, I mean, do you thinking about something you would have like a mascot in a costume or just kind of a, an image that you'd use? <laughs> Narwhal's already taken, so yeah. that's <laughs> that's a great idea, though. That's that's a really good idea. I mean, you know, our our image is uh, you know people in fruit suits, so I'd, I'd I'd go I'd go your direction if I were you. Um, so what do you guys? I, I know I've seen your branding before, but could you describe a little bit about what it looks like? And do you guys have branding standards that you have sort of written down? <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it sounds like you're on the right track, though. That's great. What about Iron Patriots? Yeah. <laughs> what is it you really like about it? Um, well, our school mascot, like our testing fire patriots, mm -hmm. and since it's robotics, iron, it's, it's just, it matches well. Yeah, yeah. that's great. And I mean, that's an example of, you know, you've tied yourself to the image of the school. Yeah. So, you know, people identify you with the school as one of the, the, you know, one of the teams at the school, I would imagine. So, um, do you guys have branding standards? We do. You do? We do. Okay. <laughs> that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we're looking at redoing a graphic designer. 
Excellent. And it make it more simpler. Yeah. Great idea. Really good idea. Excellent. Well, we're, we're doing this. We're, this is the process. <laughs> okay, what about you guys? Um, for us, we're in the Robotors, and it, we're uh, uh, like the Patriots. Ours is also based on our school mascot, the Corridors. And we kind of stuck to the plural part of that, which is the bowl. Uh -huh. And I really like the bowl that we have on our shirts. I think we're working on getting it to be a little bit more recognizable. We're still tweaking the little, like, circular logo. Excellent. Um, so yeah. Okay. And what about you back there? What team are you with? Uh, team 4159. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it's not, it's not, it's not like, like friendly and approachable is what you're saying. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> not even from the inside. <laughs> <laughs> so, so are you guys thinking about changing that or softening it or? Burning the original one. Okay. So you're working on that. Yeah. Okay. Are you, are you going to keep the same sort of visual image? Yeah. Uh, we're, we've always been a part of the school. Okay. Right. Cool. Anybody else from a team? Did <laughs> Which team are you with? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it also makes it very simple. Um, if I have a sticker that says 841 on it, yep. and our logo with our colors, it's very easy to identify what our tools are, what yeah. our toolbox is, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's not very memorable outside of the FRT space, uh, not very legible to our community outside of the FRT space. Mm -hmm. Well, and you make a really good point, is that um, you know, when you're thinking about your brand, it's not only just within FRC that you're thinking about. It's like, does your community recognize it? Do, do, you know, do your decision makers in your community recognize it? You know, do people see that and go, oh yeah, that's our local robotics team? Um, you know, so it's a really good point. You, know, you want something that's identifiable by everybody. <clears throat> it's not just you know, such inside baseball that only people who are in FRC would know who you were. So um, yeah, yeah, so that's something to think about as you as you work on your brand and you expand your brand is making sure it's something that you know everybody recognizes and everybody if they saw it on the street would go oh that's the robotics team um, you know and I mean I'd say it but that's actually one of the things I like about this as well and when I first started on the team and I didn't really know that much about the team and and what was going on um, I went to go get coffee one morning and some kid who was sitting there with his parents said oh, that's the robotics team. And it was like, how do you know that? You know, but it's, it's just, it's become such a, you know, people see it and identify it with the team and it's been very consistent. So, you know, people know what it is. Um, are there any other team brands that you guys like that you've seen? Are there other ones that you like or you kind of want to emulate? Yeah. Wild hats. Yeah. Team 100. <clears throat> I, I can only imagine that mascot drinks a lot of espresso. Um, yeah, no, they're fun. They're, they've got, a, again, the color scheme and everything, and the, and the, the mascot is something, that every, yeah, it's very identifiable and everybody knows who it is. Are there any other ones that you guys have seen? And, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and again, they have a good color scheme. It's really identifiable. The black and, and red is very, you know, a lot of contrast and looks really good. So yeah, it's a good one. Any, anybody else have ones they like? Yeah. Nuts and bolts, which one is that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there's, there's a lot of great brands out there in FRC. I mean, there's, there's a lot of really good ones. Um, so, you know, and it's always good to look at those and think about those, you know, what, what's successful about those brands? And what would that, you know, how could you use some of that in your own branding? You know, what, what, how could you use those ideas you see there, you know, and how you feel about those brands when you see them? You know, how can you kind of incorporate that into what you're doing with your own branding? So, supporting brand identity. So, the main thing, this is kind of wrapping up, is you want to develop in a brand and image that your team likes, right? You don't want to, and if people don't like your image, if you don't think it's working for you, if it's not communicating what you want to do, maybe it's time to think about moving along with it a little bit. You know, maybe you're going to refresh it. Maybe you're going to make it yeah, less imposing with a, you know, really terrible, terrifying, <laughs> you know, mascot. Uh, you know, but whatever it is, you know, maybe, there, maybe there's things you want to do that you want to improve your logo. But it should be something, you know, because if everybody isn't liking it, if everybody isn't really feeling like it represents your team anymore, maybe it's time to refresh that. Um, as I talked, you know, be consistent. So when you, you know, try and make sure that wh however you're using your brand, however you're communicating your brand, however you're using your logo, just be consistent. You know, don't keep doing different things with it all the time because um, then that confuses people and they don't, you know, don't identify you with that brand. Um, <clears throat> don't make big changes too often. I mean, it's okay to make changes and it's okay to obviously to evolve your brand. Um, but I know teams in the past I've seen it's like every year they have a different logo for their team. You know, every year is a different color scheme. Every year is a different, you know, look and everything. It's like you see them and just go, is that the same team? You know, it's just, they don't really develop any sort of consistent image. You don't really have any, so people don't really invest any idea in who they are and what they represent and what that team is all about. You were laughing, is your team do that? <laughs> <laughs> um, we're working on it. Yeah, and, and so, but, I mean, you know, variations are fine. You just need to be very considered about them. You, you know, do it carefully. You know, like you're saying, bring somebody in, look at what you have. You know, maybe there's a way to simplify it, and update it, you know, make it more modern. Um, you know, so there's ways to do it. Um, but, you know, changing it all the time, you just lose that consistency with your audience of them being able to identify who you are. And then, like I said at the outset, you know, have branding standards. Have branding standards that everybody understands. And most importantly, have a branding standards that everybody is committed to. Because if you're not committed to your branding standards, then they fall apart really quickly. You know, if it's like everybody has to agree that yes, we are absolutely on board with our branding standards. And I mean, I, for me, our business and media team gets so committed to our branding standards, it's hard to get them sometimes to make even just the smallest modification to what we're doing. You know, it's like, no, that's just the way it is. We just do this, you know, which is great. Um, but yeah, everybody needs to be committed to it. That's, that's really key to having branding standards. So with that, if you guys have any questions, I'd love to answer any questions, talk to you a little bit more about this. And also, you'll see these QR codes around. Um, if you want to use the QR code, please give us some feedback on our presentations. Yes? Yeah. I'm so curious about the more detail on the branding standards and how that drives conversations about what apparel to do, what posters to do, like how different documents look. Like how rigid is that and how do you get the buy-in there? And does it extend to like a dress code? Yes, yeah. all those all things. things. Um, actually, talked about those a little bit up front, but yes. Yeah. All, all of that is part of it. So, you know, when you're doing, and I probably should have gone into this a little bit more too, is, you know, when you're doing your brand, yes, what the apparel you use it on, you know, how you use it on that apparel is all part of your branding, right? You know, so it's your shirts, it's your jackets, how, you know, and then again, looking at how does it look if you embroider it? You know, how does it look if you're screen printing it? Um, how you know, what do you do it if you're doing like a document or a white paper or something, or you're doing some sort of a, a publication for, or a flyer or handout um, for a group that you're presenting to or, you know, the, you know, information about your team you're giving out someplace. You know, all those things have to do with, yeah, where if you look at, um, so some of the ones I 
referenced. Um, so these are three of, I'd say, the best branding standards ones out there that I would really take a look at. Holy Cows um, has a really good document that goes into all, not a, a sort of theory of graphic design and branding and marketing all the way through to how to use their logo and the acceptable variations and different ways that they use it. Um, <clears throat> aluminum narwhals, I was showing a little bit, another great one too, particularly with color. They do a lot of great things with color. Um, and they talk a lot about you know, what all their colors are, how they're used. They talk a lot about how the placement of their logo when they do a publication or a flyer or something is, um, the sizes of it. Um, so yeah, all those things are part of your branding standards. Um, and yeah, it is really important to consider, and I started to say it earlier and didn't really get into it, but you know, as much as talking about when it's big or it's small, but it's also how is it being reproduced? You know, like I said, is it, is it gonna be embroidered? Is it gonna be silk screened? Um, is it going to be printed? Are you printing it on a, on a color printer, which you're probably not going to get, may, you may or may not get the colors that really match what you're doing? Um, are you getting it printed at maybe a little bit better quality color printing um, that maybe is going to be closer to what you want? Um, you know, all those things go into it, you know, how you manage your, your image. Um, and it's just the more detail you can get into about how you use your brand, how you use your logo, how you support it and all the things that go around it, color, font, position, usage, um, those are all really important. Um, so, and they all become part of it. And yeah, what you wear, I mean, as I was talking about that, it's like different teams have different standards for what they wear to competition. I mean, you know, we require everybody to wear a line, competition. Just, there's no, you know, that's just it. You wear a line. Um, we always wear them. Uh, if you see 118, uh, they're always wearing khakis. The team always wears khakis. That's their brand. Um, you know, different teams have, you know, there's some teams have costumes, some teams have hats, some teams do all sorts of things. But that's all part of their brand, you know, how they look at competition or how they look out, you know, when you're out in the community. Or, you know, those should all be part of your branding standards is, you know, even down to, yeah, how do we dress at competition or how do we dress for public events? Um, that's, yeah, that's all part of it. That's all part of, you know, the personality of your team and, the, and what you're projecting to other people is part of, you know, your, your brand, really. So, yeah. So, all, all those things. <laughs> yes? Absolutely, I'd love to talk to you about it. Yeah, do you want to bring it up here or? Okay. Oh. Okay. See, aww, everybody's aww. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, I, th I think you're on the right track. <laughs> no, it's really, it is really cute. Thank you. And it's not, it's not overly cute though. So, and it does, oh, sorry. And that ties in, it ties in really well with your, your existing brand. So, I mean, that's, that's a great idea. I mean, yeah, something that you're going to be able to use. And like I said, you can start, you know, just like Buchanan Bird Brains on their, um, you know, with their, with their birds, right? You know, they were able to use that to attach to a lot of their educational stuff that they're doing. And, and it appeals to a lot of the kids and everything. And that's the same kind of thing there. I mean, it's cute. People go, ah, you know, kids will love it. Um, and you could you could do more with that too. So yeah, no, that's a really that looks really good, really cool. Any other questions on branding or team image? What you can do with it? That's a super good question. So we're we're um, like I said, we're coming up on our 20th anniversary. So we thank you. Yeah. We're happy, happy we made it this far. Um, so we're, we're looking at doing some special branding for our 20th anniversary. It probably won't be anything that would carry on much beyond that, but it's gonna be, you know, we're gonna do some things that will sort of celebrate our 20th year, um, that will probably incorporate 20 into it somehow and the lime and, and everything. So we're working on those kind of ideas right now. So this year you probably will see some things from us that are a little different than, than just our plain lime. Um, I'd say overall our, our personality is probably kind of boring. So we, you know, we probably will continue on with the lime. 
Um, you know, everybody likes it. Um, everybody's really comfortable with it. And I think, you know, long term, we'll probably stick with that for the foreseeable future. Um, like I said, we've done more things in recent years of adapting the lime to different things. Um, and like I said, I'm sure some of you have seen, you know, the different kinds of limes we've done for like championship and stuff like that. So um, it's, uh, yeah, we're, we're getting more about, you know, adapting it a little bit, but I think we're probably, like I said, stick with the same image pretty much because we have built up, have built up a lot of recognition with, you know, and, and I don't think we would make that change lightly to, you know, move away from it. Any other questions, ideas, comments? Great. Well, I really appreciate all of you coming out on a Friday night um, and being here and, and being here for the presentation. And I hope this is helpful. You can always, um, you know, if you if you have any any questions or anything else, you can always reach us at uh, media at citruscircuits.org. Um, and you know, be happy to talk to you about anything if you guys want some feedback on something um, like I said there's a lot of good resources out there on branding um, and team image and those three that I pointed to I, are a good place to start um, there's a lot of other teams that, that do a really good job of it as well um, anyway thank you all very much I appreciate you being here and enjoy Capital City Classic <laughs>